Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today I'm going to be doing some work on my 7.3 IDI. Um, it's a chilly day here this morning in SoCal uh, and uh, haven't been wanting to get much going, but um, Kevin stopped by and he's thinking uh, we might want to go do a little bit of racing, a little bit of drag racing. We might line up the 460 with the 7.3 and see, uh, do some tests and see how. Uh, how they compare to each other, which is something that we've wanted to do for a while. What he doesn't know is that I'm going to turn up the fuel on the 7.3 IDI. My truck's never been adjusted as far as I can tell. It doesn't roll any coal, doesn't blow any black smoke. Um, so to get me a little bit of an advantage over that 460, you know, Kevin's truck runs really good. So to get me a little bit of an advantage over the 460, I'm going to turn up the fuel two flats. So I suspect that it's never been adjusted. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think it's safe to bump it up a little bit. I don't have a pyro. I don't have a boost gauge on there. So, uh, you know, I'm shooting a little bit in the dark here. But I need every advantage I can get over Kevin's truck. So <laughs> uh, I'm not too worried about, uh, about the 7.3. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get to work on that. I think I'm also going to swap out the thermostat because my truck runs cold right now uh, I don't think there's a thermostat in there at all and I haven't uh, I have the new thermostat but I haven't cracked open the thermostat housing to uh, swap that out yet so I'm gonna turn it up two flats swap out the thermostat and uh, change out that squeaky belt I've got on there Okay guys, so I almost have the thermostat out here. Um, I wanted to show you guys what what it looks like and what you have to remove in order to get to the thermostat housing. Uh, I've got my new thermostat here with the O-ring. I think I got a 205 degree thermostat. And I got a new cert belt, so hopefully I can stop that squealing. We'll see. I hate it when they squeal. So, uh, actually, I kind of like it. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and take you guys over here and show you where I'm at right now. This is our thermostat housing here. That's through water neck from your top radiator hose, which uh, is buried behind the fuel filter bracket for your secondary filtration and your uh, alternator would normally sit here. I had to remove the alternator bracket and the alternator itself to get down here to the thermostat housing. So just two bolts like any other thermostat housing. Uh, take it off, replace the o-ring, put the new thermostat in there. I'm gonna expect that there's no thermostat in here. We'll find out here in a second. And then down here in the back, this is our injection pump here with the Banks Turbo Kit air filter housing on top. It's kind of uh, hard to see, but uh, down here underneath is where that triangular plate is that you have to take off to adjust your fuel uh, delivery. So that's what I'm going to be tackling after I get the thermostat in place and then uh, put it all back together and hopefully don't blow it up. Okay, so I scraped all the gunk and crud and built up grease and oil over the years off the thermostat housing. Now I'm going to dunk it in my, uh, <clears throat> my diesel tank, scrub it up, get it clean, and uh, throw it back on. It takes a little more scrubbing than safety clean does, or any of your other good degreasers. It works pretty good for what I use it for. Okay guys, so I got the thermostat housing all cleaned up, ready to go back on. Um, and the new thermostat that I got for the 7.3 uh, came with this rubber seal, rubber o-ring, that goes around the perimeter of the uh, thermostat. 
maybe you guys can help me out, uh, you 7.3 guys out there, because when I put the O-ring on the thermostat and seat the thermostat into the block, it doesn't feel like it's sitting all the way down in the land with this O-ring on there. And if I do use the O-ring, I'm going to have a pretty significant gap between the thermostat housing and the engine block. And I'm not sure I want to do it that way. The, when the thermostat housing came off, it had just a regular paper gasket here and no O-ring on the old thermostat. So I'm not sure what to do here. What I, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the thermostat and put a layer of RTV on here because I don't have a new thermostat gasket. That's something when I asked for the gasket for the thermostat, they gave me this O-ring. And... Uh, <clears throat> So I don't have the proper paper gasket to go on the thermostat housing. So I'm just going to put a little, small thin layer of RTV around there, stick the new thermostat in the block, and then bolt the thermostat housing in place. I think that'll be fine. But if you guys know if this is correct to have an O-ring on the thermostat, maybe it's an upgraded part or something, uh, please comment below and let me know uh, how that's supposed to work so that in the future, if uh, if it starts leaking again, or if I have uh, have a problem with this thermostat, I can I can use the use the proper O-ring, a proper setup, whatever the the new improved uh, version is. Okay guys, well, I'm back from a test drive. Uh, I took the 7.3 uh, on a couple mile drive here. What I noticed right away was that uh, after turning the pump up two flats, the truck is uh, much smoother than before. It, uh, it starts up and idles smoother, it's quieter. Um, sounds much better. Throttle response is much better than it was before. Um, top end power, I guess it's making more power up top, but I think my turbo's weak and uh, I don't think I'm I'm getting full boost out of it uh, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it's running it's smooth it starts up on a on a warm restart uh, nice and easy idles quiet and smooth uh, well much quieter than it was before I, I don't have any more belt squeal uh, under throttle it, it pulls hard uh, belt doesn't slip so that's a uh, that's a big plus as well so today I'm gonna go out there this morning here and start it up and uh, get some cold start video and see how that compares to how it cold started before I turned up the fuel well that cold start was definitely a little uh, a little rough a little problematic there uh, Normally this thing fires right up, you know, it's really not that cold here, so uh, the fact that it struggled so hard to start is uh, concerning. But I do like the way it runs, it runs a lot smoother with the fuel turned up, and uh, the engine sounds better once it's warmed up a little bit, so I don't know, I'm going to give it a few days and see, uh, might have to readdress this, uh, this fuel issue. So right now what I got to do is I got to run down to uh, my neighborhood parts store here and talk to them about replacing the booster that I put into uh, the F-350 here. I currently don't have any power assist and uh, it's pretty hard to stop this big pig uh, without any kind of uh, power brakes. It's so much smoother with the fuel turned up and the torque is, you know, the throttle response is right there off the pedal. I like it. I can even hear the turbo making a little bit of boost right now, which is nice. I didn't, uh, didn't have that turbo spool before. It's really hard to stop this thing without any power brakes. 
It's okay, I need a good leg workout. sounds better it drives better it shifts better it's just all around better with the fuel turned up um, except for that cold start maybe I can solve that with a little more idle speed um, not sure gonna have to do a little more homework on that okay guys that's uh, gonna pretty much wrap up this video for now uh, make sure you leave your comments below uh, to Kevin is he scared is he scared of the 7.3 is that 460 quaking in its boots? It might be. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let him know. Let him know what you think. Do you want to? Do you want the 460 to run against the 73? I do. Leave those comments about Kevin and his 460. Do you want to see him run the 73? Do you want to see which one do you think is going to win? Do you think the 73 is going to take that 460, or uh, or is the fixed 460 got more balls? You know, the 73 here is short bed. It, it's lighter. Um, I've, I'm running 35s. Kevin's running 38s. You know, he's running a lot heavier tire combination. He does have, uh, I believe he's running 411s or 410s on his gear ratio. I've got 410s in this truck as well, but I'm only running 35 inch tall tire. He's on steel wheels. I've got aluminum wheels. He's got a big uh, rack on top of his truck with a spare tire up there. So I think weight, uh, I think I've got the edge on weight for sure. I'm probably several hundred pounds lighter than his truck is. Um, horsepower, I know that the 460 and the 73, when they're new and fresh, are relatively close. The 460 is a little more powerful. I think he's going to have the edge, but I don't know for sure, you know. Um, my truck seems to be running pretty well, other than the lack of throttle response issue that happens. So I don't know. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. And I'm waiting on parts for both the 6.0 so I can put that thing back together and uh, the P48 here so I can do the steering shaft. And I've also got all the fiberglass coming for the uh, panel repairs that I've got to do on my door panel so I can get my panels back on my truck. So all of that stuff's on the way, but uh, right now I'm getting some time to work on my truck, which is needed. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching.